Hello, my name is Sandra Shuri and I'm here today to tell you how to construct a micro training setup for a laboratory or home. I have 40 years experience in, um, in teaching microsurgery when I was based at Northwick Park Institute for Medical Research in Harrow, London. My background is basically in organ transplantation in small animals and that's where I uh, got my um, microsurgical expertise. Um, I've been teaching microsurgery since 1979 and over that uh, period I taught about three and a half thousand surgeons. Um, I've now retired but I actually train from home so it's true one-to-one -one training that I do um, from a home setup so I'm ideally based to show you how to do that. Uh, if you need any information or anything then you can contact me on my Facebook or at my LinkedIn. So what's the first things you're going to need? Well, you need to familiarize yourself with a, a basic manual. Um, there's one that I've done with my old professor, Colin Green, or there's the Acton manual. And also to familiarize yourself with um, to, um, various YouTubes on there. There's, there's a lot out there. Um, I've just put up a basic one to begin with, but I hope to put up some more videos later on. So what do you need? Well, here's your typical workstation. So you're going to need some sort of swabs and retractors, um, some fluid. Um, if you're at home, you don't have to use saline, you can just use water for the chicken. Um, you'll need a various supply of clamps and a clamp applier and a basic set of micro instruments and swabs. So here we've got vessel dilating forceps, uh, we've got little van of scissors, micro needle holders, adventitious scissors, a larger pair of bow scissors, scalpel handle, tooth faucet, and little irrigation syringe with a 30 uh, G Rycroft cannula tip, uh, which is invaluable. It's, it's one of the most valuable tools in microsurgery in my eyes for irrigation. Um, and then you'll need scalpel blades and, and sutures and swabs. Now, where do you get your microscopes from? Um, well, basically what I've tried to do is give you the cheapest options. Because obviously if you're doing it from home or you want a laboratory set up that you're going to share, you want the cheapest options. There are obviously more expensive options out there, but these are the ones that I, I use. Um, this um, is a microscope that I use at home. It's an Amscope. Um, and if you're going to order one, you want the simulfocal stereo one, which means you can actually record through the third port and not through an eyepiece, which some of them do. So be aware of that when you're buying them. I put the link at the bottom so you can know about that. Um, but this basic microscope comes in at about 642 pounds and it does the job very well. It has a wide field of view and a very good light source. Now, if you do want a camera, this is, this is where the, the, the prices start to go up a little bit. First off, you'll need an adapter for your sort of camera. Here's the one that I, I I bought for, for my camera. Um, I wasn't too happy with the cameras that Amscope supplied. I went through two or three and realized that they didn't do what I wanted them to do. So I ended up going to a GT Vision uh, and getting their camera there. And what that does is it enables me to uh, view in real time. So when I'm teaching, I can see what the surgeons are doing. Uh, and it gives me um, options for snapshots and videos as, as well. Um, GT Vision also do basic microscopes, so maybe you would like to look at on their website for that. Now, obviously, if you're going to be sitting there for a long time, you need to make yourself comfortable. Uh, you don't need to spend an awful lot on a chair, but you do want one that's got a slightly adjustable back and a height so that you can get yourself comfortable when you're working. And that's really important if you're going to spend a few hours sitting at a microscope. Um, other things you're going to need is a cork board. Now I use a cork board as opposed to a solid board because then I can use the little mapping pins and put my retractors in and it's very easy to retract. Um, if you've got a hard surface you can't stick a pin in it so you have to use tape and it all gets a bit sticky. So I've covered it in plastic to keep it clean and also I've used two boards here because they're not quite deep enough so that the pin can penetrate and actually hold down what, what I'm retracting. Now sundries, you'll need a couple of swabs. Um, if you're doing microsurgery clinically, I recommend close weave swabs. Loose weave, weave swabs can go, get caught in your forceps and give you all sorts of problems. So a tight, tight knit swab is the best option. Then we've got some elastic bands with some bent paper clips, which make it ideal retractors. We've got a little bit of background material and a little pot to put out our um, saline in. Uh, and then we've got our mapping pins for retraction. 
Um, background material, obviously you can, you can buy the commercial ones, but any small piece of plastic sheeting will do. You'll probably need a scalpel blade of some description and a tenno suture. Now, practice sutures can be hard to get hold of and can be quite expensive. So if you can save all the expired sutures you can get from, from your practice, then um, that would be really good for you to use. And then for swabs, just for dissection and mopping up, you can just use these little Q-tips, which are very cheap to get. Now the Rycroft air cannulas, I can't recommend these enough for irrigation because they've got a nice polished tip and they will go into the, the smallest vessel. Um, and you can obtain these um, on, the, on the web from, from these addresses, but I do recommend you get those. Uh, clamps, um, various types of Ackland clamps here. I recommend the ones on, on the um, frame with, with, the, with the spreader. And uh, it's a double approximating one with bar and cleats and it makes your anastomosis much easier to do. They come in various sizes. Um, the smallest size is ideal for vessels one millimeter and below. Um, and then the second one is ideal for the chicken or maybe even size three and a, a couple of single clamps should you need those as well with an, a, a suitable clamp applier. They are expensive um, and they can be um, a little bit difficult to get, get hold of, but I, I may have a supplier in mind who can do the clamps for, for about hundred pounds as opposed to the commercial price. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll see if I can get something organized. Um, but normally you can get the clamps for somebody like Mercian um, but they are about £355 each, so um, they're, they're quite an investment, but they really are worth it. Um, and it's much better to get the V-type, which is the, the, the venous type, rather than the A, which is the artery type, because the artery type will not grip all vessels, whereas the venous type will, so just be aware of that. Now here's your basic instrument set, um, and you can pick these up from various places, so I'll just let you know where to, to get them from. But basically, you need a couple of pairs of forceps. Um, I recommend vessel dilating forceps because they do the job of an ordinary watchmaker, but the slightly offset shape and, and a slightly slimmer tip makes the suture grasping much easier, and I find them a much better overall instrument. Then you've got a little set of vanis scissors for supramicrosurgery, if, if necessary. Then you've got your needle holders, and I, I recommend a slightly curved one, uh, and then your adventitious scissors, and then your slightly larger instruments for the rest. Um, now, commercial micro-instrument sets you can get from people like s and and Mercian, um, and they'll set you back quite a bit of money. I mean, four to 500 pounds for the needle holders and scissors. So uh, it can be quite an investment. Um, you can get a basic dissection kit online from somewhere like Amazon for around about £10. So you can have a look and just get that for your ordinary tooth forcep and your scalpel handles and your scissors. Um, I do have um, some instruments that I've imported um, and I can give you a basic set for £150 for all four instruments. So if you're interested in that, then you can get in touch with me later on. Now practice models, uh, Penrose drain is a good idea to use. It's a very soft silastic tubing. Um, you'll need a 6-0 suture for it. Anything smaller than that really um, would break on it because it's quite a thick tube, but it gives you the general idea when you're first starting on how to do your stitches. Um, practice models, um, before you go on to anything else, you can try some silicon tubing. Uh, and I found the best place to get that um, is, is from uh, fishing. Uh, angling direct for instance or anything and um, they're little tiny silicon tubes of varying diameters and you can even do super microsurgery with the very fine ones that you can buy so I recommend those if you're just practicing suturing and want to get your stitches right first. Then when you want to advance on from that you want to uh, go on to the chicken and I recommend buying chicken thighs with the bone in and make sure that you actually skin the chicken before you use it because the oil in the chicken skin gets into your instruments and makes them quite slippery but here you can see um, it's a very easy dissection just about one centimeter below the edge of the bone open it up go through the muscle layers open up the chicken itself and then you've got a nice variety of vessels to use um, i've also put in a slide here with a checklist in it so that you can see everything that you need at a glance uh, as i say there are other um, options available but these were the cheapest ones that i could find for your home setup or laboratory setup if you want to see a video of the home setup 
then that's available uh, on my Facebook page and you can go and go and see that. So if you need any more information, just get in touch with me with MicroSure, um, either through LinkedIn or Facebook or, or email. Thank you very much.